Hi, uh, my name is Pranav and uh, I'm the curator of uh, Space Museum at uh, BM Birla Science Centre Hyderabad. Um, so, um, now because uh, the audience is large and uh, our effort is unique, so I thought let's just uh, record uh, a small virtual tour for people who are sitting afar and then they want to see what interesting thing that we've done and primarily to make them jealous that they cannot come here. So, uh, uh, I, I'll show you something around. Uh. The entire idea of this space museum is, is not to tell you any technical details. If you want to go into uh, the aspects of what payload and what antenna and what technology, ISTRO's website is available. So, when that call was taken, I primarily decided that it's not worth putting so many technical details. It will one, consume a lot of space and second, because it's readily available on a click, then why put it uh, on a wall? Uh, so then, uh, we were practically left with nothing. What will you do in a space museum if you're not going to put technical details? So, uh, because I've been around with Professor Yashpal, so I knew a couple of people. Uh, I knew, uh, uh, I knew actually Malika Sarabai through somebody and uh, Professor Yashwal of course, I mean I had access to his archives and then I met um, Professor MGK Manon's family in Delhi. I exchanged a couple of emails with several other people and uh, interestingly it came out that uh, history of science is, is, is uh, more important than science itself. I mean, look at this. When World Wide Web was made, the need to make World Wide Web was that particle physicist at CERN wanted to talk to other physicists around the world. That was the primary idea of having practically a World Wide Web. And now me and you, we use it for doing several other things. So. So I thought, let's just use these fundamental ideas to construct the entire museum and then let's see how it goes. Well, when I, you know, started going along, I realized that it's an interesting idea to pursue because uh, the primary thing that I am doing as, as an academic and as a science communicator, I'm just seeding the idea and which will eventually flourish in uh, a child's mind. So, that's when uh, I started handpicking narrative which talks about uh, how science was done in that era, what kind of innovation ISRO used. Uh, there's a famous picture uh, of uh, Apple being carried on a bullock cart and um, Internet University has primarily misused it here and there. But uh, having said that, I mean, when one uh, really looks into these things, one finds out that uh, the reason why a Apple was put on a bullock cart to test was uh, these people actually wanted a non-magnetic environment. So these kind of things, uh, when they come out in public narrative, people understand, okay, this is what happened and this is how things do happen. So if people in 1960s and 70s have done those kind of things with like really, really limited means, then in 21st century where everything is readily available, you know, if somebody thinks out of the box, they can actually do something really, really great. So, uh, so because it's Vikram Sarabhai Sentinel here and uh, as a curator you can take uh, a few calls and of course, I mean uh, Sarabhai has done great work in science. So, we wanted to give tribute to Sarabhai, so we uh, you know, developed a plaque for him and this interesting painting which you see here, it's, it's a vector painting and it's painted by uh, this uh, a uh, wonderful painter called Rashida, Rashida Kalangi and uh, she took about two months or two odd months to paint this. We had long discussions on what kind of form, what colors, what size of the frame, what ratio. 
So we went into really, really technical details. So the moment you enter the museum, this painting with the colors and the positioning of it breaks the monotony of the museum. And at every turn when you go around, it has a maze-like structure, which was developed by uh, our uh, architect, uh, Sataji Tuljapurkar, uh, who's, who's done a good job at uh, doing, giving the pathways and how, uh, the movement pathways actually. So this uh, was done and then, you know, eventually you want to uh, write something about him. But then, you know, uh, it becomes redundant you, if you take something from biography and put it because everybody can access some Wikipedia page and read about Sarabhai. So I, instead of it, I, I instead of that, sorry, uh, I, I uh, picked up an anecdote which Sarabhai said and something about Sarabhai which Kalam said. And the reason why this thing is important, what Kalam says is, is the Kalam mentions that uh, for Sarabhai, uh, degrees didn't matter. Sarabhai actually believed in these men and, they be, and he believed in the capabilities of these men. But then, so uh, because uh, uh, Sarabhai believed in these men, uh, they were able to achieve great things. See, you need a little push. You need motivation. See, entire, uh, as we say, right, the, you are made of uh, stardust. So when you're made of stardust and everything that is possible in the universe is also possible in you. But you need a little push. You need somebody to say that I believe in you. And then when somebody gives you that assurance that okay, everything is all right, then that is the time when you actually rise above the horizon. But because I'm a millennial and uh, all physicists are geeks and I like Robin Williams, uh, so, I have a little way of giving tribute to Robin Williams, so, and because uh, Sarabhai was also the figurehead of science and the captain of science and all that. So, Sarabhai gets Robin Williams and Robin Williams gets Sarabhai and Walt Whitman enters the museum and there you have, oh captain, my captain. So this is the legacy section and in legacy section what you see is uh, you see again you see um, the back narratives of how these beautiful satellites came to be, what happened when they were making Arabatta and Bhaskar's and then you also see uh, Satish Dhawan looking at Bhaskar's data, the meteorological data which is sent back by Bhaskar at NRSC in Hyderabad. And then of course you have the, the, all these legacy satellites are placed here. Uh, this Arabad, Bhaskar, uh, Rohini, Apple and Strauss and uh, corresponding to which you have stories of uh, all these satellites and why, what were they doing and what were they doing, what is X-ray astronomy and why were they doing what they were doing, w w cosmic ray physics <coughs> and how ground station antennas were placed and other important things as well. But then you also have a, a counterbalancing element where you uh, find out that uh, when Apple uh, was being tested, then uh, you know uh, the Apple transponder also sent uh, transmitted uh, Ramanath Tagore's uh, dance drama Chitrangada, and that's where you find out okay, Ramanath Tagore knowingly or unknowingly perhaps posthumously contributed to ISRO. So, and perhaps I mean, that the beautiful thing is that uh, Tagore being the figure of, uh, of literature in this country actually connected East and the West using an Indian satellite. And that, that, is, that is something which uh, I wanted as a curator to come in the narrative uh, in public domain where we try and understand, okay, science is not only about science, science is also about culture, it's also about societies, it's also, it's very local to uh, the population or the geographical terrain. The science that we need as a country is a different science than, than any other country uh, and it's based on their needs. Right. So today we need lots of remote sensing, lots of uh, communication uh, and all that. Uh, 
but we now of course a couple of years ago realized that we should be sending um, astronomical satellite that's when you see astrosat was sent <coughs> other satellite was doing little uh, astronomy here and there but then because of the growing uh, uh, astronomy community in the country uh, uh, people realize that it's important that we do but then if we would have done this in 70s it, it wouldn't have made sense uh, it, uh, yeah because uh, we needed uh, remote sensing more than we needed anything else right we wanted to see how grounds look what kind of terrain that we have that reminds me with one wonderful thing that uh, professor yashpal told me one of these days uh, as a child that he says uh, <clears throat> Sarabhai and Baba were friends and Baba took uh, and of course uh, Nehru and Sarabhai knew each other very well. So he, he told me that uh, uh, when he went to uh, Nehru and uh, Baba was present in that meeting and Baba when uh, Sarabhai and to uh, all of them uh, perhaps at one way one instant or the other told professor yashpal here and there that and he told me he says uh, that uh, uh, when in a meeting when nehru asked uh, that why do you need a space program and to which uh, sarabhai very innocently says that uh, that we are a very young country and we just got independence and we don't know how big our country is and if we send a satellite up and we'll be able to look at our country and we'll know how big our country is and it it struck me that this statement it's not only very innocent it's beautiful and it has a lot of value he is saying it without any ulterior motive and there's nothing that he's gaining out of it and that is something which if i were to define i would certainly define that as patriotism because you have this inherent belongingness to the soil that you want to do anything in your capability to help the nation and that is very interesting aspect of isro that isro not only uh not only it, it it not only narrates uh, the triumph of science and technology in the country it also talks about uh, the lives it has changed uh the floods it has mitigated uh the number of people that are saved from hurricanes and and tides the droughts it has saved uh you know the plant diseases it has mitigated it's true uh, i find it's a sociological uh, was a sociological experiment it was not more of a scientific experiment it uh, never had a very crisp to the point scientific end goals it always had broad sociological goals where each satellite was placed in a sense that it it would help as many people as it can i think it was the beauty of that era that we were having more of uh, sociological programs than uh, you know uh, very uh, capitalist kind of programs <clears throat> and interestingly you find out that jrd uh, uh, tata uh, as an industrialist has played a great role in uh, establishing science in this country and so along with what you realize when um uh, isro was growing up so isro uh, was not growing uh, uh, in an isolated environment if i can use that word it was a bigger pool uh you have nasa helping isro actually nasa actually helped isro a lot 
then you have uh, CNAS uh, uh, helping us through, Shock Plamon uh, was here, he was a very good friend of Sarabhai and both of them helped each other with uh, French Space uh, Agency and the Indian Space Agency which was basically in Cospa at that time, which, which eventually became ISRO. So um, these organizations actually have to be thanked and there's a need for mentioning that uh, they did uh, a great uh, help in making our country in one way or the other. So also, because it was, it's a space museum, and it's not only an Indian space museum, so you also have uh, international space station and you have good narratives which come out of uh, international collaborations and uh, you know other things. And on this side, so that was, that side was meteorological satellites. Uh, that is meteorological satellites or the earth observation satellites and from here what you see is is a communication satellite. All of them are communication satellites. So what I have primarily tried to do is, uh, is to make sure that people when they take a learning home, they didn't take a statement home, they take an experience home. So what this communication satellite does, I mean it, it helps you out, it takes care uh, that you are talking to people across nations, you have internet, you have GPS and everything. So I remember as a child uh, reading this uh, poem called uh, a, po a Poet a Thousand Years Hence by uh, James L. Flecker and I realized that Flecker would be ideal to explain communication satellites. So that's where you see, you know, he says, since I can never see your face and never shake you by the hand, I send my soul through time and space to greet you you will understand. So these kind of things, these alternate narratives uh, are brought in to explain things in a very different light. Uh, so now because we will be moving into the Chandrayaan section, so what we done is you do a little primer here of how moon is and what moon is and what kind of experiment and all that. So what you see is, is, an, is what, kind of, uh, what kind of satellite the moon is. But on the same thing, you also see William Shakespeare. And what is William Shakespeare doing in there? Again, William Shakespeare is basically talking about how moonlight sleeps, uh, you know, upon something and then uh, where people sit and talk. And who sat and who talked? in the moonlight on moon's surface, Neil Armstrong. <coughs> so as you see these, these little couplets and verses that are placed here and there, they are riddles. You have to solve them to understand the entire panel. So that's a little game here and there where I am playing. And there you see um, Ho Shang Merchant's poem, uh, The Moon. Uh, he takes uh, from the Habba, from 16th century Kashmiri poet Habba Khatun to Chandrayaan 2, the entire journey of how everything changed, where Habba Khatun was this Sufi uh, poet, uh, poetess in Kashmir, and how now. Uh, women who have, uh, you know, who can, who hold uh, metaphor very strongly has changed the entire narrative and are running missions like Chandrayaan 2. So it's an interesting way of communicating science and I, I thought it will be, 
it's redundant you know when you talk about science in a plain language monotone and it just kills the charm and because it does then nobody actually wants to learn about science anymore in this section this is basically chandrayaan um, hanging over the moon surface so this is this is to give a little perspective of how uh, chandrayaan might have looked uh, when it was there so <coughs> yeah i mean um, when you come here and when you see this you realize okay now i have uh, a little way of looking things because uh, as you know as as uh, anybody i mean anybody uh you practically don't know how satellite looks uh, outside earth or around any celestial object so this was uh, to give a little perspective and <clears throat> you see uh, stars backlit in it so you understand okay it's it's the starry night it's dark and uh, because um, again as i said uh, i am a millennial and uh, i want to do things uh, in a very different light so you have twinkle twinkle little star here yeah it's 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 a very interesting thing to have a nursery rhyme uh, around because <coughs> sorry uh it talks about uh, stars which are there and then you see the moon and the two mo- very very famous objects uh, that you know about uh, as a child so i think when you put these in perspective and then you know, when people are taking an experience home they know what uh, they do So this is uh, the Mars Orbiter mission section, and uh, this is a very interesting section actually. So what uh, I've done is I have taken lots of data from lots of sources, not only ISRO, but from NASA, from European Space Agency, to talk about how what is Mars, how you put uh, explorers in the orbit, what all explorers are there. and uh, with with mars data the mom data how mars looks so here what you can see is in uh, three filters red green and blue how mars looks um, and this data was taken from mars orbiter mission and then we superimpose it that's how you look uh, in color and uh, then there is an explanation of how mars what is mars and how it became a planet i mean there is is a good mention of uh, planet formation theory so as as an astronomer i, I actually uh, enjoyed uh, curating this museum because uh, i was being a child again seriously uh, because you know so many things right so it, it's like this you know general theory of relativity and talking about general theory of relativity to another person who also knows the tensor mathematics that you're talking about but when you talk about general theory of relativity to a child and then you super simplify it that's when you understand okay how beautiful this theory is so that kind of thing so i had this uh, wow moments uh, so many of them during curation and yeah i think uh, as a 26 year old man this was amazing so all these things that you see here these images dust detection this uh, moons of mars are i think the data has come from uh, mars orbiter mission interesting thing you what you see there's mars curiosity rover as well and the reason is uh Mars is uh, a no man's land and everybody can go there and there's so many people who've been there and so many people uh, people who want to go there 
the reason why I'm uh, using the word people uh, is uh, when you want to become a giant, what you do is as a child, a giant takes you upon his shoulder to show you what is beyond the wall. And when you start becoming a giant, you bury him. And then another child comes, you put him on his, your shoulder, then he becomes a giant and he buries you. The reason why I mention explorers as people, because these are the giants who will get lost in the dust of Mars to make sure that we know a little more, even a bit more about the planet. So that's where you see the mass exploration family portrait here. It's a very interesting portrait. <clears throat> I, got, I got this from NASA. Uh, and then of course you see uh, uh, all millennials uh, suffer from uh, this thing when their parents uh, get on social media and they start following you and they start sending you friend requests and Instagram tags. Then I found out, okay, there's a mom who's become a Twitterati. So that's a mass orbital mission which has become a Twitterati. And as I mentioned, you know, from Habba Khatun to now, everything has changed. And as a young nation, we uh, struggle with uh, uh, female uh, literacy rate. Uh, women are not even allowed to get out of their houses. To women leading major projects uh, like MOM in India. So from from mom to mom, it's an interesting and extravagant journey. And I'm using the word extravagant because of a very well-known reason. So now when you come uh, to <coughs> the launch vehicle section, uh, so you see first, second and third generation of launch vehicles. You also see there's an interesting uh, backstory about uh, the launch vehicles. Uh, you see uh, Sarabhai looking at a sounding rocket. You have... Uh, Manmohan Singh, uh, which I very strangely found out, uh, and this image exists. Uh, yeah. So uh, the interesting thing is, you know, I mean, for every launch vehicle, there's a reason why it came, the and the why uh, why it became what it became. Uh, so that's why, you know, I mean, uh, there is uh, there's a science, you know, when when it comes uh, to uh, problem solving and there's always a story to science. So this is uh, more of a reading, reading section. So there you find out that you have uh, Swaminathan's memoir where he talks about uh, how him and Sarabhai, so Swaminathan was basically the father of Green Revolution in India and how him and Sarabhai uh, you know had a talk and then Sarabhai talked uh, with his friends in NASA and they wanted to find out how to, you know, uh, find the expense of this disease in the in coconut in Kerala. So uh, he used uh, his friends, uh, I mean, the NASA satellite for remote sensing and then, uh, and then they realized that, you know, India should have a remote sensing program. So it's, it's an interesting thing to know about how very small things give birth to really, really great ideas. And then you also have a history, of course, genesis of uh, Krishi Darshan. I'm not going to tell you about anything about Krishi Darshan right now. You have to come and see. Uh, then uh, to, again, <coughs> give a little more importance to things which are of primary concern these days. Uh, you have a panel from European Space Agency talking about space death. Uh, uh, 
here we have NRC's data which gives the physical data and then it about to Bhuvaneshwar which has different bands and different uh, uh, <coughs> satellites looking at the same place. Then uh, there is a triumph story of how Fani cyclone uh, was mitigated, then of course how images are taken. And then here you have very interesting thing. Uh, I pulled a memoir uh, by Professor Yashpal of a uh, site program, the Satellite Instruction and Television Experiment. And uh, this is this was the NASA ATS-6 satellite, which is used to broadcast signals over India. These are the box TVs being made, and these are these are the village people looking at those TVs, where uh, these instructional experiment, these small episodes were shown to them, and how to do plowing or how to put seeds and everything. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting to look at it. Then. You also find out something very interesting about Jhavua communication experiment. Uh, so again, I mean, uh, so then there's another thing which you would uh, see is uh, Rakesh Sharma. So when you're talking about India in space, you would want to talk about Rakesh Sharma because it's interesting to talk about Rakesh Sharma. But then uh, when I was curating, I thought, okay. If I'm talking about Rakesh Sharma, what exactly I'm talking about? What what exactly am I talking about Rakesh Sharma? So I thought, okay, <clears throat> there's an interesting thing. Um, there's an interesting conversation that he had uh, with Mrs. Gandhi. Uh, Mrs. Gandhi asked, "How does India uh, look up from above?" And to which he says, "Sare jahan se acha hindosta hamara." So there's an entire story of how that conversation happened. And then you find you are Rao's memoir, and uh, the uh, the Russian collaborations uh, official report talking about it. And because I'm a Coldplay fan, of course, so <laughs> I have uh, used uh, some of uh, the lyrics of the song "Fix You." So uh, it took me about uh, almost two years uh, to curate the entire project. So as I've I've been saying all along that uh, I was looking for images and multimedia and mostly speeches and uh, personal um, conversations and uh, articles, whatsoever I, I, I could find. So as as my personal journey uh, as the curator of the Space Museum, it was quite interesting, uh, and I must say it was really humbling. But I realized these giants uh, that we look up to had this childlike curiosity. Uh, when I saw so many images of Sarabhai and Kalam, for that matter, Geshpal, Menon, Chitnis, you are Rao. They had that spark in their eye when they were looking at things. So that is exactly what I uh, tried to impart in the museum that I curated. That when you enter and you take a tour and then you, when you go back, you have a little spark in your eye and you're looking for something which is uh, maybe beyond the wall. And then you stand on the shoulder of a giant, and then you start. You you just want to do a sneak peek here and there, and then you want to see what is beyond the wall, which in turn starts making, which starts turning you into a giant. And then a child comes again, stands on his shoulder, and then he starts. So she starts looking at uh, what is beyond the wall. And so I I felt like that child. When I was curating the project, and I'm standing on so many. Uh, uh, I'm looking at the so many giants. I'm standing on their shoulders, and just trying to look on the, that kind of science that they've done, and the kind of history they've created. 
I must say that <clears throat> this museum is quite important because it is not, uh, you know, it doesn't dictate any idea. It doesn't give you anything uh, like served on a silver platter. You have to work. The verses, the couplets that have been placed here and there are riddles. The, there are unfinished stories that I've put uh, in uh, the entire museum. You have to find what you want. Because as we understand today, internet is a good tool. Uh, instead of finding uh, various forms of news and uh, uh, irrational evangelists, I think one must uh, look into something which is of much more importance. And uh, I came to realize uh, in the entire curation project that Indian science was more of a sociological experiment. Uh, than a scientific one. We were trying to solve sociological problems through science. And that's an interesting thing to see, you know. I mean, science being 100% logical and 100% uh, to the point, and cosmic ray physicists, you know, I mean, they're theoretical physicists. They have nothing to do with applied science, practically, if you look at the textbook definition of it. But then all of these brilliant physicists working in, in fields to make sure farmers have the right seed for the right uh, harvest. <clears throat> and I sometimes, you know, used to remember off and on that you know, one thing that Dylan Thomas wrote uh, long back, do not go gentle into that good night, rage, rage against the dying of the light. And when you see these immensely talented and greatly knowledgeable men doing things which are unimaginable with, with smile, with curiosity, with that loving nature, with care. It inspires you. It's like this, you know, I mean, the entire journey uh, in my curation or orifice row or anything that's scientific in nature is like the phoenix bird. It burns, it turns into ashes, and then it gets, it comes out from ashes as a new, it comes out from ash as a new being. Which, you know, it tells you that uh, failures uh, are part of the project they will come when you start a journey one way or the other. <clears throat> and when you uh, realize, you know, there is a certain journey that you have to take, even as an individual or, or as a scientist or even as when you come in the museum, when you look at it, you will realize that vision is something which is of extreme importance. Sarabhai had a vision, Kalam had a vision, Satish Dhawan had a vision. That vision got realized that we are sitting today and when I'm recording this video, you're using the internet and seeing it thanks to all those men who were before us and they worked really hard to make sure that we talk like this. And it is never one person. It can't be. It is never one person. It is always about several people doing several things together. And that fabric, that entire fabric, is what lifts us. Having said that, uh, my museum, the Space Museum at uh, BM Birla Science Center, is more of an experience. And I strongly recommend not only as an academic, but also as the curator and as a student of science, you should visit. You'll feel good. Mm -hmm.